been dressed and ready for the day? Pouring your best perfume? Yes, I am, Daddy. That's right, it's the day of the picnic. I hope there's a breeze off the water. Miss Fern says there always is. She says it never rains on the 1st of June, too. Don't count on it. <laughs> Are you leaving today, Daddy? My plane goes in an hour. Back to Washington and the Pentagon and climb at the coddles eggs. I like coddled eggs. <laughs> you like everything. You're just too good to be true. How long will you be gone? Sealed orders, darling. All I know is that I'll be home as soon as I can. Now, what will you give me if I give you a basket full of kisses? I'll give you a basket full of hugs. <laughs> mm, I like your hugs. I like your kisses, Daddykins. You're so big and strong. I'll miss you. You know, the general doesn't have one pretty girl on his whole staff. Well, I wish he didn't have my daddy. I'll miss you every day. Will you write to me? Do you want me to write to you? Of course I do. Then I'll write to you every day. Well, every time I write to Mother, I'll put in a note for you. Will you really? Really and truly. And every time the general tells a good joke, I'll send you an official report. Well, we better send the bad ones, too, because that won't be very often. <laughs> Sweetheart, I will. I will write daily to both of my sweethearts. Unless someone makes a mistake and starts a shooting war and we have to go underground. <laughs> would you go underground if there was a war? Well, yes, I would. By gum and I'd go fast. You said by gum because I was here. That's right, I did. <laughs> Darling, take care. I will. Every moment that I'm away. And I'll lie the minute I'm on the ground. Take care of each other, you two. We will. <laughs> oh, that's uh, Monica and Emery. They wanted to say a last goodbye to you. Sure. Is it all right? Well, it's perfect, darling. Braids and all. Come in, Monica. Come in, Emery. <laughs> Just the effusive neighbors from upstairs, darlings. Have to be in on everything. No lives of their own, so they live as a people's. Well, I speak for my brother as well as myself, because he never gets a chance to speak when I'm around. Oh, there, I've talked enough. <laughs> well, say something, Colonel. Well, I'm afraid it's going to have to be goodbye. Oh, the taxi's here, and I don't want to have to rush through traffic. Don't worry about your two pretty girls, Ken. We'll take care of them. And if they look a bit peaked, we'll set up smoke signals. <laughs> Counting on you, Henry. And you, Monica. Goodbye, Kenneth. Goodbye. Uh, don't worry about that, I got it. <laughs> Sweetheart, this is it. Goodbye, big guys. Goodbye, Daddy. I promised myself I wouldn't come down. Sweet. It's just another empty month or two. We'll get through it somehow. to go. You hate to let him go. I'm not very self-sufficient. Mm. Well, I am, and it's not so good. You're in love, the both of you. You're lucky characters. <sighs> I wish I were. Oh, by the way, nobody has to take Rhoda to the bus because I made up some cupcakes for Miss Fern, and she's coming by to pick them up. Oh, good. But before she gets here, I have some presents for you, my darling. Presents? <laughs> yes. The first is from Emery, and it's a pair of dark sunglasses with rhinestone decorations. And he said to tell you they're intended to keep the sun out of those pretty brown eyes. Oh, yes. Let's see how that looks. Wow, now, who could this glamorous Hollywood actress be? Could it be little Rhoda Penlock, who lives with her delightful parents on the first floor of my apartment house? <laughs> I like them. Where's the case? Oh, here it is. And now for the second present, which is from me. Now, this was given to me when I was eight years old. It's, it's a bit young for me now, but still just right for an eight-year-old. However, it has gone and set in it, so I'll have to change it for turquoise, since turquoise is your birthstone. So I'll have the stone changed and cleaned, and then it's yours. Can I have both stones, the turquoise, too? Rhoda? Rhoda, I can't believe you would ask such a question. Well, but of course you can. Why, certainly. I mean, how wonderful to meet such a natural little girl. You know, she knows what she wants and asks for it. <laughs> Not like these self-indulgent little pets who have to go through analyses before selecting an ice cream soda. <laughs> Dear sweet Aunt Mom. Oh, darling, I know. 
I am behind the times, but I thought children wore coveralls and play suits. D to picnics now, you, my love, look like an absolute princess in that red and white dot at Swiss. But tell me, aren't you afraid you'll get it dirty or scuff those new shoes? Rhoda won't soil the dress and she won't scuff the shoes. She never manages to get anything dirty. How she manages it, I don't know. I don't like coveralls. They're not. Well, you mean coveralls aren't quite ladylike, don't you, my darling? Oh, you sweet old-fashioned little dear. <laughs> Am I to keep this now? Yes, you're to keep it till I can find out where I can get the stone changed and cleaned. Then I'll put it in my box. Aww. Some pretty early, Miss Penmark, but it's my idea to do the windows on this side. Yes, Leroy, you can begin in the kitchen. Excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> Morning. I like garnets, but I like turquoise better. Oh, oh, you sound like Fred Stan tap tapping across the floor. What do you have on those shoes? I run over my heels. Mother put these iron pieces on to make them last longer. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't take any credit. It was Rhoda's idea entirely. <laughs> They're very nice. And they save money. Oh, you penurious little sweetheart. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, Rhoda. I think you worry far too much when you're not the very best at everything. And that is exactly why Emery and I felt that you should have some presents today. You, you wanted that penmanship medal very much, didn't you? It's the only gold medal Miss Fern gives. Everybody knows that I wrote the best hand and I should have had it. Rhoda, these things happen sometimes, and when they do, we simply accept them. I told you to forget the whole thing. I just don't see why Claude Daigle got the medal. Excuse me, I just drank some water. Oh. Rhoda, forget it. Put it out of your mind. I'm sorry. I know you don't like people calling on me. I won't. I won't! I won't! I won't! Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Leroy, have you completely oh. lost oh. your senses? You just got one on Rhoda's shoes! Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Brelo. Oh, you're right, darling. Oh, Leroy! Leroy! I own this apartment house. I employ you. And I have given you the benefit of every doubt because you have a family. I have found you emotionally immature, torn by irrational rages, a bit on the psychopathic side. But after this demonstration, I believe my diagnosis was entirely too mild. You are definitely a schizophrenic with paranoid overtones. Now, I have had enough of your discourtesy and surliness, and so have the tenants in the building. Now, my brother Emery has wanted to discharge you, although I forbade it. I will no longer do that. I have my misgivings. I shall not insist that you behave like this any longer. Monica, it was an accident. I'm sure it was. He meant to do it. I know Leroy well. It's no accident. Christina was deliberate. A spiteful act of a neurotic child. He meant to do it. You made up your mind when you walked through the room. Rhoda! No, 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 ma'am. I'm, I'm just clumsy. <laughs> My patience is at an end, and you may as well know it. Go about your work. Yes, ma'am. <sighs> he has the mind of an eight-year-old, but has managed to produce a family, so I keep him on. Oh, that must be Miss Fern. forgot the two dozen cupcakes upstairs. Rhoda, will you come and help me carry them down? Yes, of course. They're all packed. Good morning, Miss Fern. Oh, well, that is a perfect curtsy, Rhoda. Thank you, Miss Fern. <laughs> she does such things well. Oh, she does everything well, as you know better than I do. Uh, and as a person, does she fit in well at the school? Well, let me think. In what way do you mean, Mrs. Pemark? Well, I don't quite know how to say it. Rhoda has a mature quality in her that's disturbing in a child. Mm -hmm. My husband and I thought that enrolling her in a school such as yours, where they value discipline and the old-fashioned virtues, might perhaps teach her to be a bit more of a child. Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Well, in some ways, in Anyways, Rhoda is the most satisfactory people the school has ever had. She's never been absent. She's never even been tardy. She is the only pupil in the history of the school to get 100% in deportment each month in every class, plus 100 on the playground and self-conservation each month for a full school year. 
if you've dealt with children as long as I have, you know what an amazing record that is. And she is the neatest girl I have ever seen. My husband says he doesn't know where she gets her tidiness. Certainly not from him or me. Oh, well, she has many good qualities, and she's certainly no tattletale. Oh. Oh. One of the boys at the school broke a window across the street, and we knew that Rhoda knew who it was. When we questioned her about it and told her it was her duty as an honorable citizen to report the offender, she just sat there shaking her head, eating her apple, and denying she knew anything about it, and giving us that pitying, calculating look she gets at certain times. I know that looks so well. It was admirable too, for she was merely being loyal to a playmate. Well then, did the other children like her? Is she popular? Uh, the other children, uh, well, I, um, ooh, here we are. Well, we must be off. My sister and the others will be waiting. Goodbye, Miss Mark. Goodbye, Miss Fern. May it be everything a picnic should be. Oh, thank you. Come, Rhoda. Yes, Call the prosperous voyage. And take good care of her. Oh, no time for off. the sets left behind with nothing to do? Mm. I suppose I could go about the dreary business of trying to make my face presentable. <laughs> that happens every morning. Ah, your face? Think of mine. <laughs> I just get so gloomy when Kenneth goes away. Anything could happen before I see him again. There's an old saying, die a little at parting. Uh, my dear, we die a little bit every day if we want to brood about it. You know, why don't we make some kind of party of this? I mean, you're having Emery and Reginald Tasker over for lunch. Can't I help with that? What do you feed a criminologist? Oh, prussic acid, blue vitriol, ground glass. <laughs> oh, how about other things? <laughs> oh, yes, nothing would hurt Reggie. Well, he thrives on buckets of blood and sudden death. Hmm. How many mysteries has he written? You know, a complete set of his works would encircle the Empire State Building, or me. <laughs> well, come on. I'm a garrulous old hag, but I can ground glass. We're not going to let you be lonely. <clears throat> I know it all, Monica Breedlove. She don't think nobody knows nothing but her. I'll show that bitch plenty. And that young, trough feminist Penmark. She don't get enough of what she needs. I can give it to her. Rhoda now. She's a smart little girl. She sees through me and I see right through her. <laughs> but damn, she's smart. Do you any good, actually? Well, 
It broke my marriage, actually. <laughs> I looked into the very bottom of my soul. What a spectacle. <laughs> so, when I came back, I, I asked Mr. Breedlove for a divorce, and he didn't oppose it. It was then that I decided what I always really wanted to do was make a home for my brother. And so I did. I mean, I don't think dear Emery appreciates it, but... I can handle anything except for talk of your analysis and analyzing of your friends and me. I don't want to look into the bottom of my soul. <laughs> well, I can understand that perfectly. I mean, the truth absolutely disgusts us. Now, I've come to the conclusion that Emery is a larvated homosexual. What? Thank you! <laughs> what does larvated even mean? <laughs> it means to cover, to go the mask, conceal. It means something that hasn't come to the surface as of yet. <laughs> he can say that again. If I'm a homosexual, we'll have to change the entire concept of what goes on among them. Now, where did you get that? Do you like this, Monica? Pure association, best evidence of all. I mean, Emery is 52 years old. He's never been married. I mean, I doubt that he's ever had a serious love affair. How would you know if they're serious? Oh, please. Let's look at things objectively. I mean, what are Emery's deepest interests in life? They are fishing, murder mysteries in which housewives are dismembered, canasta, baseball games, and singing in male quartets. <laughs> what does Emery do every Sunday? He spends his Sundays on a boat with Reggie and other men fishing. And are there ladies present on this occasion? They are not. Uh, you're damn right they are not. Huh. Well, I guess you're all shocked, aren't you? <laughs> but you shouldn't be. I mean, Dr. Kittlebaum <laughs> believed that it was all a matter of personal preference. I mean, homosexuality is just triter than incest. Now, I, for one, am perfectly frank about it myself. Subconsciously, I have an incestuous fixation on every. And it's not normal, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> Thanks a million, little sister. God, can't we talk about something normal? Like murder! Uh, does anyone mind if I smoke? Uh, oh, what are you trying to prove, Emery? All right, we've run through sex. Let's try homicide. Reggie, you're the expert. All right, I'm obliged. We're doing some research on Mrs. Allison lately. News Budget wants me to do an article on her. Mm. Although I can't say she's a rather flaming subject. Mm. Just an unimaginative nurse who thought that she'd kill people off for their life insurance. <laughs> and she ran through quite a list, too, before they caught up to her. Hmm? Was this recent? Well, last year and the year before. And she'd still be at it too, except she was too stupid to bury a poison. <laughs> With the result that all of her victims had the same symptoms. Nausea, burning throat, intestinal pain, not to mention the life insurance policy made up of the old broad with the arsenic. <laughs> oh, please, I don't like to hear about such things. Oh. You don't? Now that's an interesting psychic block. Why would Christine dislike hearing about the murders? I have an aversion to violence of any kind. I even hate the revolver Kenneth keeps in the house. Oh. Well, you just, do you dislike the revolver more than the poisons? I hate them both. Hmm. That's interesting. Maybe if you try thinking of the first thing that comes to your mind, we could get to the root of the anxiety. Uh, Reggie, finish telling your story. Please continue, and Christine will associate. Oh, nonsense, Monica. What do you mean, associate? Oh. Well, it all came to an end uh, late last year. It was actually around May, the middle of May. Mrs. Allison went over to her sister-in-law's house. She got there just in time for lunch. When her niece Shirley came up to her, she said she had promised to bring her a birthday present. Now, Mrs. Allison was so upset that she had forgotten the present that she ran off to the local store to pick up soda and candy for the family. Hmm. Do you think of anything? Absolutely nothing. Turns out she had bought a present. It was ten cents worth of arsenic. <laughs> <laughs> there must be something on your mind, something. Well, I was thinking at the moment of how devoted the Fern sisters were to my father when he was a radio commentator. Hmm. No, I think I understand that. Now, how do you know of this? 